part of the 20th century, there occurred a unique event in the spiritual history of modern India. In the remote village of Sridhar Mayapur, on the banks of the sacred Ganga in West Bengal, there resided a distinguished personality who would, in due course, do more to help raise the consciousness of human civilization than that of any other person of his time. On March the 7th, 1918, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada adorning the saffron robes of a mendicant, accepted the renounced order of life, Trudandi Sanyas. He then raised the clarion call of Sri Krishna Sankirtan at Sri Mayapur with Kartala Murdanga, that would eventually be heard in every town and village around the world. In so doing, Saraswati Thakur brought attention to the deep spiritual teachings of Krishna consciousness. He issued a universal challenge of totalitarian war against all philosophical and theistic misconceptions that cover the true identity of the soul. In the teachings of Saraswati Thakur, the only thing lacking in this material world is Krishna consciousness. The only real welfare work to be done is the distribution of Krishna consciousness, the prime benediction for humanity at large. The achievements of power, wealth and fame are all temporary and lead to the perpetual suffering of the soul in the cycle of repeated birth and death. The Sankirtan movement, started by Saraswati Thakur from Sridhar Mayapur, was the revival of the original Krishna Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the 15th century. Through his preaching, Saraswati Thakur attracted to his mission many sincere members of the intelligentsia and social elite of Bengal. Together with his disciples, Saraswati Thakur led a second renaissance of the Krishna consciousness movement, establishing temples, defeating opposing philosophies, recruiting thousands of converts to the doctrine of divine love, and publishing ancient and modern spiritual texts in periodicals, books and newspapers, and distributing them throughout India and abroad. From the time of his accepting Trudanya Sanyas in 1918, until his departure from this world in 1937, his mission, known as the Gaudiya Math, flourished under his guidance. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada was born in Orissa at Jagannath Puri on February the 6th, 1874, as the seventh child of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srimati Bhagavati Devi. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a government official and was in charge of the Jagannath temple in Puri. In his spiritual life, Bhaktivinoda was a great pioneer of the Krishna consciousness movement. At the time, when the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had all but been lost or distorted by unscrupulous persons, such as the Saki Bhaktivinoda, Bhakti Vinod began publishing numerous papers, journals and books, establishing the pure teachings of Sri Chaitanya. By his personal character, he restored dignity to the Gauri of Vaishnav community. Bhakti Vinod prayed fervently to Lord Jagannath to kindly send him someone who would be capable of preaching the message of Sri Chaitanya. Upon the birth of his seventh child, Bhakti Vinod realized after observing a series of divine events that his newborn son was indeed the answer to his prayers. Accordingly, Bhaktivinoda named his son Bhimla Prasad, meaning the mercy of Lord Jagannath, or one who revealed to the world the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. His sons receiving the blessings of Lord Jagannath during the annual Ratayatra festival, when he was only five months old, was noted by Bhaktivinoda as a direct confirmation of the divinity of his son. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada shares with us the memory of this event. When my spiritual master appeared at Jagannath Puri, he was the son of a very big uh, government office, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He was magistrate, and in those days the magistrate is a big officer in the government practically next to governor. 
And Bhaktivana Thakur was in charge of the Jagannath temple. So there was Ratha Jatra uh, festival and the car was passing in front of Bhaktivana Thakur's house. So the car stopped before his house. And at that time, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, a child in the lap of his mother, the mother took the opportunity of uh, rising on the car. He was Majesty's wife, so he had the facility. Immediately people gave, gave her a way to go in on, on the top of the car and place the child on the lotus feet of Jagannath, and there were many garlands, one garland fell upon him. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati. Blessing. Bhakti Vinod Thakur moved his family to Calcutta the same year as Saraswati Thakur's birth, and later, in 1881, Bhakti Vinod constructed Bhakti Bhavan, the family's residence and place of bhajan. While digging the foundation for the house, Bhaktivinoda found a Kurma Shalagram Shila. He then placed seven-year-old Saraswati Thakur in charge of the daily worship of the Shalagram, which still remains at Bhakti Bhavan. Saraswati Thakur was indeed an exceptional personality who always showed keen interest in spiritual life. By the age of seven, he was assisting his father in proofreading the Sajana Toshini, a monthly spiritual journal. That same year, he received Harinam initiation with Tulsi beads and Narasingha mantra from Bhakti Vinod. As a primary student at the Sri Rampur Christian Missionary School, Saraswati Thakur quickly mastered his general studies. Later, in 1885, while under the tutelage of Pandit Mahesh Chandra Chudalme and Pandit Sundalal, he excelled in Sanskrit, mathematics and Vedic astrology. He was thus awarded the honorific title of Siddhanta Saraswati meaning one whose knowledge and scholarship are blessed by the goddess of learning. That title was to remain with him for life. In 1887, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was posted in government service at Krishnanaga. During that time, he began visiting Navadweep town. On one such visit to Navadweep, Bhaktivinoda was staying at the Rani Dharmashala, when he had a vision of Yogapit, the birth site of Sri Chaitanya. One Saturday evening, Bhaktivinoda was sitting on the roof of the Dharamshala in Navadweep. Across the Ganga, in the direction of Mayapur, Bhaktivinoda saw an effulgent glow. Within that divine effulgence appeared the Adbhut Mandir, a wonderful temple surrounded by light. Bhaktivinoda was utterly amazed. The following Saturday, Bhaktivinoda went to the area of Mayapur where at night he again had a wonderful vision of the Adbhut Mandir. He spent the next day wandering all over the area. The elderly locals told him that this was indeed the location of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's birth. They pointed out an extensive mound covered with Tulsi plants as the actual site of the Lord's appearance. However, in Navadweep, the findings of Bhaktivinoda were opposed by caste Brahmanas, who claimed that the birth site of Sri Chaitanya was actually Prachin Mayapur in modern Navadweep town. But according to Bhaktivinoda's research, utilizing old maps of Ganga Govinda Singh and authentic manuscripts of the Chaitanya Bhagavat, Bhakti Ratnaka, and Navadi Parikram Padati, he was certain that Mayapur was located on the eastern bank of the Ganga. He also discovered that the present town of Navadweep, situated on the western bank of the Ganga, was not more than 100 years old. Thus, Prachi Mayapur in modern Navadweep could not be the birth site of Sri Chaitanya. It has gone no ground because your gopi in the birth place it is good for all respect. She particularly chills it. She, after all, Mahapu was born just 529 years or so, or 20 years. And during that time, definitely there are that, let's say, all the records, maps, everything. So from the point of archaeological from the point of history, 
from the point of geography, from the point of literature, it is clearly proved without any doubt that Mahaprabhu was born in the eastern side of Ganga. And Prachin Mayapur is in the western side. Therefore, undisputed. Wishing to confirm his vision and findings even more resoundingly, Bhaktivinoda in 1888 requested his Shiksha Guru and the head of the Gaudiya Vaishnav community, Jagannath Das Babaji, to come to the newly discovered birth site of Sri Chaitanya. The aged Babaji, who was more than 120 years old at that time, had to be carried in a basket wherever he went. However, when Jagannath Das Babaji was brought to the spot discovered by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he became overwhelmed with ecstasy and jumped from his basket, shouting, Etonimai Janmabhumi! Etonimai Janmabhumi! This is indeed the birthplace of Sri Chaitanya. Thus, from both an empirical and spiritual point of view, the place of Sri Chaitanya's birth was ascertained. From this time on, Saraswati Thakur began staying in Mayapur at intervals. In 1889, Bhaktivinod built his place of bhajan, Swananda Sukarakunj, at Godrumadweep on the banks of the Jalangi. Sometimes Bhaktivinod and Saraswati Thakur were staying at Godrumadweep, sometimes at Krishnanagar, and sometimes in Calcutta. In 1891, at age 17, Saraswati Thakur gathered some of his young friends in Calcutta and formed a philosophical discussion group called the August Assembly. Each member of this discussion group took a lifelong vow of celibacy a vow that in the end only Saraswati Thakur himself was able to maintain. He remained a Naishtaka Brahmachari, completely celibate throughout his life. From 1892 to 1898, Saraswati Thakur assisted Bhaktivinoda in the development of Mayapur and the propagation of Krishna consciousness. In 1895, a grand festival was held at Mayapur in which Bhaktivinoda installed deities of Sri Chaitanya and Vishnu Priya. In 1896, Bhaktivinoda prepared a small Krishna conscious publication for sending to the West, entitled Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His Life and Precepts. The small booklet was sent to the Royal Asiatic Society in London and to several universities in the United States and Canada. Bhaktivinoda was eager to spread the teachings of Sri Chaitanya among the educated people of the West. Bhaktivinoda Thakur could see that there is also uh, some sincerity in the Western search uh, for truths and answers to the mysteries of life. And he knew that there were the answers in the Vedas, in the tra transcendental tradition. So uh, he surely appreciated that an effort should be made to convey this message in a language people could relate to. News of the American Transcendentalist movement had reached India, and Bhaktivinoda dreamed of one day seeing Western scholars and philosophers come in contact with the teachings of Sri Chaitanya. When Bhaktivinoda published Sri Krishna Samhita in Sanskrit and Bengali in 1880, he had sent copies to scholars like Ralph Waldo Emerson in America and Reinhold Rost in London. Now, with the publication of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His Life and Precepts in English, Bhaktivinoda was optimistic that the message of Mahaprabhu would soon be taken up on western shores. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had himself predicted that the holy name of Krishna would be sung in every town and village of the world, and Bhaktivinoda was anxious to see this happen. Also, the year Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, His Life and Precepts was sent to the west, another great Gaudiya Vaishnava personality was born in Calcutta, who in the latter half of the 20th century would fulfill the desires of Bhaktivinoda and Sarasvati Thakur by preaching the holy name of Krishna in every town and village around the globe. That great personality was Abhai Chiran Dev, later to become known as A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Swami Bhivi Bodhaya Maharaj of Gopinath Gaudiya Math confirms these facts. Actually, nowadays, if you look the root to spread the message of Mahaprabhu around the world, he is the root of these messages to spread around the world and grow. 
it was his desire to spread the message. First Mahaprabhu's desire, then Bhaktivinoda's desire, and Prabhupada's desire, and he was trying to spread, and his desire, by his desire, Bhaktivinoda Swami Prabhupada, he uh, went out by his power, by his grace, he spread the message around the world. While staying in Calcutta, Saraswati Thakur studied Sanskrit at the Calcutta Sanskrit College and he studied Vedas under Pandit Prithividar Sharma. During those years, Saraswati Thakur manifested a strong tendency towards renunciation and informed his family and teachers that he had no intention of taking up householder life. In 1898, Saraswati Thakur accompanied Bhaktivinoda on pilgrimage to Gaya, Banaras and Prayag. After returning to Swananda Sukarakunj in Gudrumadweep, Saraswati Thakur, then 24 years old, met his spiritual master, Gorky Shodas Babaji, for the first time. It was at Swananda Sukarakunj that Saraswati Thakur would have repeated opportunities to associate with the most elevated Vaishnavas of his time, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Jagannath Das Babaji, Vamsi Das Babaji, and Gorky Shodas Babaji. In late January of 1900, after repeated humble submissions, Gorky Shodas Babaji happily accepted Saraswati Thakur as his formerly initiated disciple and conferred upon him Bhagavati Diksha and the name Sri Vashabhanavi Dayata Das, meaning one who is the servant of the Dear Most Beloved of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> ছিল যে গৌর কিশোর মহাজি মহারাজ কে উনি যে আমার নিজের ছেলে তো এই জন্য উনি এত সংকোচ করেছেন যে আমার ছেলে কে তাহলে উনি নৃসিংহ মন্ত্র দিয়েছেন নৃসিংহ মন্ত্র হই না প্রথমে উনি দিয়েছে ভক্তিনাথ ঠাকুর প্রভাত দিয়েছে তারও গৌর কিশোর মহাজি মহারাজ কে ভক্তিনাথ ঠাকুরের কাছে ভাগবত শুনতে আসতেন সামান্য সুখ দুঃখ নিয়ে গোপাল সব বলে তা ভক্তিনাথ ঠাকুর দেখলেন গৌর কিশোর মহাজি খুব ভালো সেন in 1902, Saraswati Thakur returned to Jagannath Puri with Bhakti Vinod, where he came into conflict with the Kirtan party led by Radha Raman Charan. Radha Raman Charan had established a poetic style of Kirtan, wherein there were opposing philosophical conclusions and conflicting transcendental mellows. It was also the practice of Radha Raman Charan to imitate ecstasies and sometimes dress himself or his male followers as gopis or saki beckons. Saraswati Thakur found Radha Raman Charan's kirtan deviations and imitations to be against the principles of Sri Chaitanya. All these deviant practices were firmly protested by Saraswati Thakur, who preached pure devotional kirtan. In 1905, Saraswati Thakur traveled to South India where he met the head priest of the Ramanuja Sampradaya at Sri Purambadur. Together, they discussed the Vaishnav order of Tridandi Sanyas that had been in effect for several thousand years since the time of Vishnu Swami. It was clear to Saraswati Thakur from their discussions that Tridandi Sanyas was an accepted part of Vaishnav Dharma, although it had been lost over time in certain parts of the country. Returning from South India, Saraswati Thakur went to Mayapur where he remained for four years and performed the Nam Vrat of chanting 300,000 names of Krishna every day. Mahaprabhu is the only person who came into this world to give lip to all people by chanting by Nam Sankirtan. Nam is the only thing by which one can Get rid of all the pains of this world. Nam Kirtan, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे आज महाप्रभु फुल ऑफ जंगल सिंगल टेम्पल भोजन को थे By 1914, Saraswati Thakur had become widely recognized as a stalwart preacher of the Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya. The numerous branches of Bengali pseudo spiritualists, such as Gaur Nagaris, Bals, Sakhi Bekis, Smartas, Ativadis, and Jati Gosais, cowered in fear before this great personality. The mission of Sri Chaitanya was now in good hands, and Mayapur was beginning to flourish. In a letter. Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave Saraswati Thakur specific instructions for establishing Daivi Varanashram, the divine social system based on service to Krishna, for preaching Krishna consciousness to the masses, for publishing devotional books, for serving Sri Dham Mayapur, and for establishing the annual circumambulation of Navadvip Dham. Not long after giving these instructions, Bhaktivinoda Thakur concluded his earthly pastimes and attained the eternal realm of Golok Vrindavan. On June the 23rd 1914 precisely at noon Bhaktivinoda entered the pastimes of the supreme lord far beyond the vision of the conditioned souls of this world The next year on November the 17th 1915 Gorky showed us Babaji also left this mortal world for the eternal pastimes of the supreme lord Saraswati Thakur then placed his guru of his body in samadhi Within two years, both the gurus of Saraswati Thakur, Gorky Shodas Babaji, and Bhakti Nath Thakur had departed from this world. Saraswati Thakur felt deep separation from his affectionate gurus and was thus thinking how he would be able to fulfill the desires of his spiritual masters. Then, one night, while contemplating the instructions of Bhakti Nath Thakur, he saw a vision that Sri Chaitanya had arrived at Yogabit Temple with all his associates. Amid the sound of Krishna's sankirtan, with him the six Goswamis, Jagannath Das Babaji, Bhakti Nath Thakur, and Gorky Shodha Das Babaji, all of whom spoke encouraging words for Saraswati Thakur to boldly preach the message of Sri Chaitanya, and assured him of all success. Soon after, Saraswati Thakur found a piece of torn paper carried by the wind. The paper contained a verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, wherein Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructs Sanatan Goswami. From this verse, Saraswati Thakur derived four codes that would become the foundation of his missionary activities: to publish Krishna conscious literature, to teach the principles of devotional service, to open centers for the cultivation of Krishna consciousness, and to teach people how to perform renunciation. That same year, Kunji Bihari Vidyabhushan became a disciple of Saraswati Thakur and began assisting him in spreading Sri Chaitanya's message. Kunjari Bihari Vidyabhushan, later to become Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj, became the head organizer and manager of all of Saraswati Thakur's preaching efforts. From 1914 until 1918, Saraswati Thakur gave considerable thought to the necessary steps to be taken in order to widely spread the Sankirtan movement. Having received direct intimation from both his gurus and from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly, Saraswati Thakur resolved to accept Tridandi Sanyas, the renounced order of life, on the occasion of the 432nd appearance day anniversary of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, on March the 7th, 1918. Thus, he became known as Tridandi Goswami Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He then established his preaching headquarters nearby Yogapit at Sri Chaitanya Math, 
where he installed deities of Sri Sri Guru Goranga Gandhavika Giridhar. The Bhagavad printing press was set up at Chaitanya and the presses worked constantly for printing the message of Sri Chaitanya. That same year, a house was rented at Altadanga Junction Road in Calcutta, and a flurry of preaching and Sankirtan activities began. Many educated and influential people of Calcutta, such as Jagad Bandhu Datta and Sakicharan Rai, came to the Altadanga house to hear the lectures of Saraswati Thakur, and later became his initiated disciples. The place of preaching was called Bhaktivinoda Asana, meaning the place of the conception of Bhaktivinoda. Soon thereafter, he awarded Tridandi Sanyas to Sri Jagadish Bhakti Pradeep, a disciple of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and conferred upon him the title Bhakti Pradeep Theatre. Tridandi Sanyas is the lifelong vow of unconditional service to the Supreme Lord with body, mind, and words. In 1920, the deities of Sri Sri Gauravinod Ananda were installed at Bhaktivinod Asana in Calcutta, and the spiritual institution for the widespread propagation of the Sankirtan movement under the name Goryamat officially started. In 1921, the annual Navadvip Mandal Parikram began from Yogapit, and thousands of pilgrims and devotees attended. In 1924, the first Vyasa Puja, celebrating the 50th appearance day anniversary of Saraswati Thakur, was held at the Gaudiya Mat in Calcutta. In 1925, during the Navadvip Mandal Parikram, Saraswati Thakur and his disciples were physically attacked by an angry mob of caste conscious Brahmins, pundits, and hired thugs in Navadvip. At that time, Vinod Viharidas, later to become Bhakti Pargyan Keshav Maharaj, performed the heroic act of exchanging dress with Saraswati Thakur and diverting the mob while Saraswati Thakur was taken to safety. That year, the Vyasa Puja of Saraswati Thakur was held in Katak in Orissa, and he was given the title Prabhupada, meaning at whose feet many masters had taken shelter. 1926 and 1927 saw the publication of the daily Bengali newspaper Nadia Prakash and the monthly English journal The Harmonist. Not a day went by, nor a moment in a day, where Saraswati Thakur was not preaching and propagating the message of Sri Chaitanya. He gave much importance to the publication of Krishna conscious literature and called the printing press the Brihat Madanga. Saraswati Thakur often said that the Kartala Madanga in Sankirtan can be heard nearby, but the printing press can be heard around the world. In the course of 18 years, from 1918 to 1937, Saraswati Thakur published important literatures of the six Goswamis, such as Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Hari Bhakti Vilas, and Sakriya Saad Deepika. He published the Bhagavad Gita commentaries of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur and Balada Vidyabhushana. He also published Vrindavan Das Thakur's Chaitanya Bhagavat, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami's Chaitanya Charitamrata, all the works of Bhakti Nod Thakur, the fifth chapter of Brahma Samhita, and Sri Vyasadev's Srimad Bhagavatam. Saraswati Thakur's writing and publishing was indeed monumental. During these years, Saraswati Thakur also established over 64 missionary centers in India and abroad, and installed deities of Mahaprabhu and Radha Krishna in all the main Gaudiya Mats, such as Sri Sri Gandhavika Giridhari at Chaitanya Mat in Mayapur, Sri Sri Vinod Ananda at Bhagavazam Mat in Calcutta, Shri Shri Radha Damada at Krishna Chaitanya Mat in Vrindavan, Shri Shri Vinod Madhava at Purushottam Gaudiya Mat in Jagannath Puri, Shri Shri Gopi Gopinath at Brahma Gaudiya Mat in Alanath, and Shri Shri Nayanabhi Rama at Ramananda Gaudiya Mat on the Godavari River. During this time, Saraswati Thakur also conferred sannyas on a total of 21 disciples and sent them out to preach the message of Shri Chaitanya. Some of his prominent sannyasi disciples were Sri Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj, his first sannyasi disciple, Sri Bhakti Hridaya Bon Maharaj, his leading preacher in Europe, Sri Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj, the guardian of pure devotion, Sri Bhakti Vivek Bharati Maharaj, a great preacher of Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Bhakti Vichar Yajavara Maharaj, 
the last initiated sannyas disciple of Saraswati Thakur. After moving the deities from Uttadanga Junction Road to the newly constructed temple at Bhag Bazaar, Saraswati Thakur opened the first theistic diorama exhibition in Mayapur during the 1930 Gorapanima festival. The dioramas depicted the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and the principles of devotional service. In 1932, Saraswati Thakur travelled to South India again, where he preached the Sankirtan movement at Sri Chaitanya and established the worship of Sri Chaitanya's lotus feet in several important holy places, such as Mangalagiri, the place of Lord Narasinghe, and Kovu, where Sri Chaitanya met Ramananda Rai. He travelled with a few of his disciples as far south as Mysore and Uti. At Uti, he wrote the forewords to Sri Brahma Samhita and Sri Krishna Chaitanya by Professor Nishikant Sanya. At Mysore, he was the honoured guest in the palace of the king, Krishna Raj Vodhya. During his stay in Mysore, Saraswati Thakur lectured on the principles of Srimad Bhagavatam at the Maharaja's Sanskrit College and visited several of the local temples such as Nanjangur and Sri Rangapatna on the banks of the Kaveri River. Saraswati Thakur was keen to preach Krishna consciousness to Westerners. In his travels throughout India, he sometimes discussed philosophy and religion with persons like the German scholar Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld, Sir William Malcolm Haley, Governor of the United Provinces, and Professor Albert Southers from Ohio State University. Saraswati Thakur often made elaborate arrangements for Westerners to come to Mayapur to hear the sublime teachings of Sri Chaitanya. From South India, Saraswati Thakur returned to Bengal, where he laid the foundation stone at the house of Advaita Acharya in Mayapur. The Bhaktivinod Institute, an educational foundation for the residents of Sridhar Mayapur, was also opened that same year, and many students were admitted. The first Vrajamandal Parikram began in 1932, and Saraswati and his disciples circumambulated Vrajamandala during the month of Kartik. Saraswati arrived in Vrindavan by car with many of his non Brahmin disciples. This created quite a stir among the Kaska Swamis of Vrindavan, and all the main temples closed their doors in protest. Only the Radha Raman temple opened its doors and welcomed Saraswati Thakur and his disciples. At the Radha Raman temple, Saraswati Thakur commented that he was getting the darshan of all the deities of Vrindavan in Radha Raman. So, this is the very I, I want to tell that this is the very close relation with the Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati and our great grandfather Madhusudan Goswami. And uh, he, uh, they have uh, together, they, they have preached together all over the India. At that time, the, the Adi Samajis, they were very powerful. And they want to criticize our, about that uh, deity worship and our uh, Gaudiya Vaishnava cult. They don't accept that Mahaprabhu was the incarnation of Radha and Krishna. They have said that only the Mahaprabhu was the great personality, but not the incarnation of Radha and Krishna. But our great grandfather and uh, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati, they have proved with the scriptures that Mahaprabhu was the incarnation of Radha and Krishna. And they have given the challenge to other Samajis. And uh, they have defeated that and they have uh, accepted that Mahaprabhu was the incarnation of Radha and Krishna. So, at that time that all the temples, they have allowed the Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati after that, that uh, he, uh, he can visit all these Gaudiya Vaishnava temples and other temples. And he has visited and he has given the respect from the temples and the local Gaudiya Vaishnava Sarsus. At Radha Kund, Saraswati Thakur established a house for the residence of his gurus, Bhakti Nod Thakur and Gorakhi Shodas Babaji. He said that he and his disciples should only stay there to serve the higher Vaishnavas and that their place of residence should be at Govardhan Hill, a little distance away. Saraswati Thakur always cautioned his disciples not to intrude upon the higher leader of Krishna. First deserve, then desire. Do not try to go to the higher plane with your impurities. First, purify your heart with Nam Sankirtan, the holy name of Krishna. Unlike other so-called gurus and siddha purushas of his time, Saraswati Thakur did not allow his disciples 
to discuss the details of Krishna's amorous love with the gopis, although Saraswati Thakur did indeed have many highly qualified disciples. He was particularly disturbed if he heard that any disciples discussing Ras Lila. Saraswati Thakur also did not allow his disciples to read such books as Gita Govinda, Ujwala Nilamani, or Govinda Nilamrita. Saraswati Thakur's caution was Matala Harijana Vishaya Range, Pujala Rag Pata Gaurava Bange. Always worship the path of Ragamag, spontaneous devotion. Do not rush ahead. Keep yourself a little distant and below. One who transgresses these instructions will be cast down. That was the motto of Gaudiya Mat. Why people were objecting? Why they were objecting? Hmm? Because he was distorting the teachings? Or he was pointing out the distortion? After all, if you really want to take and put in a nutshell what he taught about the Gaudiya Vaishnavism was, hmm? we should practice Gaudiya Vaishnavism without any hypocrisy. This is what he said. I am the enemy of hypocrisy, especially when it comes in the name of Gore. This was really, really what he, what, what he amplified, hmm? this point, and there was a lot of it, and therefore there was a lot of objection. Hmm? And then he react when they reacted, when they object, he roared louder. They used to call him his disciple Singha Guru, Lion Guru. Hmm? Like a lion, he roared back louder. He was not about to be intimidated hmm, by any such objections. Yet then they would cite the philosophy and question his initiation and this and so many things. Doctrines came up uh, in opposition to him. So many fine, detailed points, ignoring his emphasis on uh, uh, being the enemy of hypocrisy and emphasis on a serving disposition. Hmm? rather than just collecting information about Radha and Krishna Leela. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Actually cultivating self-sacrifice. And this is what this monk order was about. Self-sacrifice. Since somebody could sit happily in the Dham, in the holy place, and get chapatis and rice and chant Hare Krishna. No, send him to England mm -hmm. with nothing. Send him to America with nothing, these monks. Let them live only on their faith in Krishna. Krishna will provide. Faith in the name of Krishna. That's what my Guru Maharaj did on his order. And see what happened from that. Hmm? Who has life, he said. That person can preach, can explain these things. Hmm? They had life. They were giving life to Gaudiya Vaishnavism. If we can embrace Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur and live in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, reject him and die to what it's all about, no matter how much information we may have about it, how well we can speak theoretically about it. In 1933, Saraswati Thakur sent his first envoys to Europe via London to preach the message of Sri Chaitanya. Bhakti Hiradai Bon Maharaj and Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj set sail from Bombay with the blessings of Saraswati Thakur to preach and propagate Christian consciousness in the West. In 1934, the construction of the Adabut Mandir at Yogapit in Mayapur began. While digging the foundation for the temple, a deity of a Dr. Jav Vishnu was unearthed. The eminent archaeologist Sri Ram Prasad Chanda ascertained the age of the Dr. Jav Vishnu deity to be that of the era of Sri Chaitanya. Thus, it was determined that the Dr. Jav Vishnu deity was the household deity of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Madha, the parents of Sri Chaitanya, further confirming the site as the birthplace of the Supreme Lord. The next year, the Adbud Mandi was completed due to the magnanimous contributions of Sri Sakicharan Bhakti Vijay, who bore the entire expense of the temple. The grand opening was held at Gorpanim in 1935 and was attended by thousands of devotees and pilgrims who performed loud Krishna Sankirtan. The festival was also attended by the king Maharaja Bir Bikram Kishore Dev Bahadur of Tripura state. The Maharaja commented that he was pleased to see the developments of Sri Chaitanya's birthplace. With the opening of the skyscraper temple at Yogapit, it was concluded by all that Saraswati Thakur had indeed fulfilled the vision of Bhakti Thakur by building the Adbut Mandir.
Sir John Anderson, governor of Bengal, then visited Mayapur by personal invitation and presented an official proclamation that Yogapit in Mayapur was the authentic birth site of Sri Chaitanya. News of this came as the death blow to the Sahaja and Kasparama communities of Navadweep. In September of 1935, Bhakti Hridayvan Maharaj returned from preaching in Europe and was greeted with a grand reception in Hara Station in Calcutta. With Bon Maharaj were two German scholars, Baron von Kurte and Herr Ernst Schulze. In due course, Ernst Schulze fully embraced Gaudiya Vaishnavism and became Sadananda Das, an initiated disciple of Saraswati Thakur. Saraswati Thakur was happy upon the return of his preachers from Europe, but still remained anxious that someday strong preachers should become permanently established in Western countries. In October 1936, Saraswati Thakur went to Jagannath Puri, where he began to manifest the pastimes of his departure from this world. In Puri, he stayed at Chattaka Parvat and preached vigorously to his disciples and visitors. During one confidential discourse, he mentioned that we will not live in this world very long and that if we can die while continuously doing Krishna Kirtan, then our birth will have been successful. We are only carriers of the message of Sri Chaitanya. In December, Saraswati Thakur returned to Calcutta and stayed at Bhagbazar Gaudiya Math. It was here that he gave his last instructions to his disciples. Always preach the message of Sri Rupa Raghunath, the followers of Sri Chaitanya. Our only desire is to become the dust at the feet of the followers of Sri Rupa Raghunath. While staying at Bhagbazar Gaudiya Math on January the 1st, 1937, at 5.30 a.m., Saraswati Thakur, who had descended to this world from the personal entourage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, concluded his earthly pastimes and returned to the abode of the Supreme Lord. Much to the wonder of everyone, all the clocks of the mat stopped at exactly that moment. Arrangements were then made to take Saraswati Thakur's body to Mayapur by train, where he was placed in Samadhi. Along the way, thousands of people gathered to pay their respects to this great personality who had boldly preached the message of Sri Chaitanya for the benefit of all. A special train from Calcutta to Krishnagot was arranged and from Bhagavad Mount we carried his holy body to sell the station from there. That's a special train to Krishnagot from there. And the roof of a bus came to this, and this Sarvaganya Ghat from there. We crossed the Saraswati River and then again we carried by our shoulder uh, to the mud. And there, this place of Samadhi, <coughs> in the morning we came, we reached the whole day it took to come from Calcutta, to come to Chaitanya Mart, about seven, eight o'clock we reached Chaitanya Mart at night. Then the digging of the grave was begun. We, we were engaged in that ourselves. Then early morning, of course, he was blessed and from there I still given by this dignified figure of an Ajayu. He sat in a very dignified position and in a very, very mm, grazing color. His complexion was fair, but after 24 hours, uh, when he was uh, made to sit on the asana, a dignified position of an asana, the tall and the fair and the thin and very soft body. 
then of course the salt was given around and then the salt and the earth came so after this so he is sitting I came out I could not stand to uh, cover his head I came out and then I again go uh, cover the Tulashi plant was put there and we all circumvalated with some sung and some reading of Bhagavatam Haridas Thakur I specially requested who was chanting the, the conclusion poetry in Chaitanya Charitamrita commentary made by himself. Prabhupada had his own vasya in Chaitanya Charitamrita and in the conclusion he composed a poem, very sweet and very uh, lamenting temperament. I asked to read that poem of him and it was read. Then Haridashtha Gurnitjam and Chaitanya Gurnitjam after that was read. And then circumvolution of the Samadhi, the Tulsi plan from that. And one gentleman requested me to chant the same Sri Rupa Manjari Pada. But uh, the, two days before he requested me to sing and I sang. So that song was sung, sung by me. And then everything finished. Jiva Manjari Pada Sehi Mara Sampada Sirupa Manjari Pada Sehi Mara Sampada Sehi Mara Bhajana Puja Sehi Mara Bhajana Puja Sehi Mara Pranadhan Sehi Mara Yahara Sehi Mara Pranadhan Sehi Mara Yahara Sehi Mara Jiva Nidhiva Sehi Mara Jiva Nidhiva After the disappearance of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, his mission, the Gaudiya Mat, suffered a severe setback when three of his important disciples deviated from the principles of pure devotional service. This created quite a disturbance, after which many of Saraswati Thakur's sincere disciples, such as Bhakti Vivek Bharati Maharaj, Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, Bhakti Daitan Madhav Maharaj, Bhakti Raksha Srila Maharaj, Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj, Bhakti Saranga Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Vichar Yajavara Maharaj, Bhakti Velas Teta Maharaj, Saki Charan Prabhu, Abhai Charan De, and others rose to the occasion and strived with great endeavor to uphold the teachings of Sarasvati Thakur in principle and through their perfect behavior and personal example. During that time, Many missions following the codes of the Gaudiya Mat were established and the preaching of the Sankhyata movement spread throughout India. Many Krishna conscious literatures were published and many new temples were opened. Krishna consciousness in India was flourishing. But the prediction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that the holy name of Krishna would be spread in every town and village around the world remained a great mystery. All that was about to change in 1959 when Abhay Charan accepted the renounced order of life and became A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. 
For several years, Bhaktivedanta Swami prepared himself for a journey that would literally affect the lives of every man, woman and child living on this planet. In 1965, Bhaktivedanta Swami set sail on the good ship Jaladuta bound for the United States. He carried with him a trunk of newly published volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam with commentary in English. Disembarking from the Jaladuta at New York City, Lord Krishna began to make Bhaktivedanta Swami dance, the effect of which would ignite the Sankirtan movement on a global scale. In 12 short years, Bhaktivedanta Swami, then known as Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, was responsible for millions of Krishna conscious literatures being distributed in dozens of languages around the world. Temples and places of worship were established, prasadam, the mercy of Lord Krishna, was distributed to millions, and thousands of Western men and women embraced the holy name of Krishna and the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Take advantage of this movement Make your life perfect. Go back to home, back to Godhead. Due to Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Hare Krishna had become a household word in Western countries. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada commented many times that his success was only due to the blessings of his spiritual master, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. In the 1980s and 90s, the words of other prominent preachers of the Sankirtan movement, such as those of Bhakti Raksha Sridha Maharaj, and Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj also became heard in the Western world. The involvement of these two great personalities in the Krishna consciousness movement further enhanced the achievements of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Now, in the 21st century, the disciples and grand disciples of these great spiritual masters continue the spreading of the Sankirtan movement on virtually every continent, in every country, and in every town and village of the world. Krishna consciousness is the eternal consciousness of the soul. It is not limited by race, color, or a particular society. Krishna consciousness is universal, and those who understand this are indeed fortunate. May the blessings of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarathvi Thakur remain with them forever. Sadhusamaan Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Gupta Ami Prabhupada Kijaya